I'm asked to make all kinds of hyper-realistic cakes. And today's cake is a very popular request. And while I make it, I'm also gonna tell you guys a couple stories about my pets. Because this object that I'm making in cake today reminds me of them. It might remind you of your pets too. My name is Natalie Sidesurf and I make cakes that don't look like cakes. And today I'm gonna show you how I made a Roomba cake. This real Roomba is my first Roomba ever. And when I first received it, I wasn't exactly sure what to expect. I knew it was a robotic vacuum, but I had never seen one in action. So as soon as I charged it, I turned it on and I was utterly mesmerized. <laughs> I just watched it move around the room, pivoting around the furniture. It was learning my home right before my eyes. And now Roomba is like my buddy. Roomba is my new pet. I mean, it has the mannerisms of a pet. I've had two real pets in my life and like all pet owners. I loved them more than anyone else ever loved a pet before in their lives. <laughs> My first pet was a tan cat. I was only a year old when we got him, so I don't remember his early years very much. But legend has it that this particular cat was a big blabber mouth. <laughs> He meowed a lot, right off the bat. So my parents named him Meow. Meow was a little overweight and he was really lazy, like really, really lazy, which was great because he didn't give a hoot about what you did to him. So as a kid, I could kind of pester Meow and I could poke at him and pet him and he just didn't even seem to mind. I found out later in life that that isn't very normal behavior coming from a cat. Meow was a good cat, but as he got older, he started to do this thing where he'd bite cords. This was the 90s, so you're your typical house had a ton of cords everywhere. Meow would chew on all the phone cords, the Nintendo 64 cords. He'd chew on all the cords that existed behind our TV and even behind our huge computer. Electronics were very boxy back then. <laughs> Eventually, my parents started to realize that there were little teeth marks all over all the cords. We were hoping to catch Meow in the act to try to get him to stop chewing the cords, but it's actually a very difficult thing to do. Meow may have been overweight and lazy, but he was also sneaky. We tried to get him to stop, but what can you do? Maybe we should have coated the cords with something that tasted bad. One day we came home from the grocery store and Meow was not looking too good. He was a little out of it and we saw that his lips were all swollen. He clearly like electrocuted himself. I know I giggled a little. This is not funny. I felt horrible for him. But look, Meow ended up being okay even after the little zap. And from that moment on, Meow, uh, well, you know, he didn't actually learn his lesson. He still chewed the cords every once in a while. He pretty much did it for the rest of his life. We did our best to cover the cords, but he just, he always found a way. As Meow got older, he kind of got, let's just say he wasn't the most attractive cat. I mean, I would never call him ugly, never. I, I think he was adorable. But as I got into my teens, and Meow also got into his teens, my friends would come over and they would ask, you know, like, what's wrong with him? I'd be like, oh, he's just really old. <laughs> and he has scars on his mouth because he electrocuted himself. And he has cataracts. And maybe he's losing a little hair. This just happens. Mangy looks aside, I absolutely loved Meow. My whole family did. Meow was happy and he lived a really long life. He lived to be 17 years old. He lived until I was 18. That means I was an adult. I miss Meow, he was such a good kitty. It's pretty wild to have a pet around you your entire life, like into adulthood. The second pet that I had, I got in my 20s. My future husband, Dave, and I started dating, and two months into our relationship, we decided to get a dog together. Good thing that relationship worked out, because buying a dog with someone you've only known a short while probably isn't the best idea. But again, it worked out, we're married, all good. <laughs> so when we went to pick up our puppy, we found out that she was actually born on the exact same day that Dave and I had our first date. It was such a coincidence. How cool is that? She was born on the day of our first date. Our cute new pup was white and she was short and stocky. She was like a little tank. And we named her Mrs. Robinson. As a young pup, she was really easy. But as she started to get a little older, she got a little rambunctious. And when I was home alone with her, she would run laps around the house like a maniac and then she'd bark in my face. <laughs> and then Dave would come home from work and the dog was an angel, an absolute angel. I'd explain to Dave how wild she was all day and he'd be all like she can't be that bad look at her and she's just calmly laying in her bed looking all cute she was an actress 
You might be thinking, walk her. Well, I did. I used to let her run around the yard too. I would let her do all kinds of things and she was still so crazy all day. But eventually she grew out of it and she actually did calm down. I loved that dog so much. As an adult dog, she was easy. She was such a good little buddy. And as she got even older, she developed these strange habits. Like she started to get up every single night in the middle of the night, like clockwork, to get a drink of water. And that meant that every night she would wake us up with the chains of her dog collar clanking around. And Dave started calling her Jacob Marley. <laughs> it's a Christmas Carol reference. It's very funny. Now Mrs. Robinson lived a long life. Not meow long, but she did live for over 13 years, which isn't too bad for a chonky bulldog mix. So in the way that Meow was my cat my entire childhood into my adulthood, Mrs. Robinson was our dog during our entire relationship, up until a little over a year ago when we had to put her down. We loved her so much. I'm so happy that we got to spend 13 years of our lives with her. And there you have it, a Roomba cake. Roombas really do maneuver like a little animal. My little pet that cleans up after itself. All right, let's watch Roomba do what Roomba does best, and then we'll cut the cake. If you like this video, like this video below, and subscribe to this channel if you haven't yet, because I post a brand new hyper-realistic cake every week. I'll see you next week for another cake.